Hello, welcome to the Friday, March 26, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. With PFSense being one of the more popular firewall choices for many in our audience, we do get occasional requests how to submit firewall logs from PFSense to our DShield database. We had scripts in the past to accomplish that, but nothing really sort of reasonably nice and polished. Well, leave it up to our latest handler, Ye Jing, who did create a pretty neat uh, tutorial in how to configure PFSense to forward your firewall logs to the shield. This is uh, based on the most recent release uh, 2.5 and does show you how to submit logs via email. Now we do also accept logs via HTTP, but uh, that would require additional coding that has not been completed yet. And as always, of course, we uh, do prefer these days if you're running one of our honeypots and use it to submit logs, which gives us richer logs and leaves us less at the whim of upgrades to firewall firmware. And Cisco released a long list of patches uh, yesterday. 18 of the vulnerabilities being addressed are rated as high and they affect a number of IOX XE software versions as well as some of the access point software that you find on, for example, Cisco Aeronet and Catalyst devices. Now, while exploitation of some of them is a little bit more limited, for example, you have to hit the device as it is booting up. Some of the other vulnerabilities are essentially sort of your OWASP top 10 style vulnerabilities. But probably most interesting among those updates is an update for the Cisco Jabber client for Windows. This has been a piece of software that has had multiple critical vulnerabilities in the past. And this one is also rated with a CVSS score of 9.9. Exploitation may happen without authentication and essentially consists of an attacker sending a malformed XMPP message to the victim. Then we got a new version of OpenSSL. This version fixes uh, two security vulnerabilities that are rated high. Now OpenSSL also has a critical category, so these are not critical, but still something to watch out for. One is a null pointer dereference that leads to a denial of service on a server. So essentially a server could be crashed with this vulnerability. The second one is a little bit more intriguing in that it does weaken the strict flag in certificates. The strict flag usually is supposed to do additional checking on the certificate, in particular the purpose of the certificate but if there's no purpose set uh, then uh, some of these checks may actually be ignored this only affects relatively new versions of open ssl open ssl version 1.1.1 h and later which is uh, where certain additional checks for uh, bad elliptic curve parameters were added Overall, this doesn't look like any sort of critical patch now style vulnerability unless uh, this uh, denial of service vulnerability starts to get exploited. So just wait for uh, new libraries uh, to be published for your particular distribution. And that's probably already the case. And talking about SSL, I mentioned it before, but it's becoming real now. The next version of Google Chrome, Chrome 90, which is expected to be released April 13th, will by default go to the HTTPS version of the site, not to the HTTP version if no scheme is specified. This is mostly done to speed up uh, browsing because 90 plus percent of requests go to HTTPS sites. So if you first go to HTTP, then you're being redirected to HTTPS, you're kind of wasting a round trip here. And that's why Chrome decided now to first try HTTPS. If that doesn't work, it may still fall back to HTTP. 
And you will still be able to directly go to an HTTP website. You just have to add the HTTP scheme uh, to the URL, just like you had to add HTTPS if you wanted to save yourself the skip over HTTP. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.